Smash Max was the turn out of my lifestyle Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies Conversating with the gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's a never ending saga Gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's a never ending saga Gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's a never ending saga Gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's a never ending saga Walk through the sands of times like Gara On the other Side of that gad is karma, he wet Prada, the devil like inside your box now while the angels fly over my head. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. We are back with another episode of the God's Hour podcast with your boy Big Sir Bavel back in the motherfucking place to be La America Superior Palace 81 Studios live in effect, live and direct. Episode numero 85 A Love Superior, a Love Superior, yes. So, as you can see, I moved a few fucking paintings over here, right there, boop. Uh, that's the painting, obviously like all the paintings I have in my room, I made myself. But this one is A Love Superior to cover for it, a little backstory. Uh, shout out to the um, the homie, I mean, I don't know him personally. Anytime someone says the homie, you don't know if it's like they're really homies or like they just met and they're cool, so that could just be the homie like that. But pretty much, one two is a dope producer. I believe he's out of Europe. I don't know where specifically. A lot of these uh, real dope lo-fi boom bap producers, um, especially like that really champion the lo-fi era are not from the U.S. The only one I think uh, that I know that pioneered lo-fi hip-hop would be Swum, and I don't even know if Swum is from the U.S., just FYI. One Two, I probably, the first time I heard of One Two B probably was college, like my freshman year of college, so... I think it was a one two flow fills beat and it had like some chick in a bikini. She had a nice little <laughs> not a guy like that. <laughs> Yo, that that song is forever gonna I forgot what that song even is, but I already hear rappers out here that are taking the <laughs> and it sounds so fucking dumb. Like you cannot talk about <laughs> without it being a stupid fucking thing. Like it just know. It's the song you have anytime with the sh- 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 is not hard. It's not street. It's not none of that shit. It's always going to be funny. It's never not going to be funny. Whatever, right? One Two is a great producer from wherever he's from. He's just a dope producer. And I had this idea last year where I would make an album because, you know, John Coltrane has a love supreme, a love superior. Going to flip that. You know what I mean? Is Black History Month. And I had the idea for a year. So with one, two, I really love this beat. So I wanted to make a full album with him. This isn't like I got his permission or anything. I'm just rapping over his beats and putting them out. And hopefully he likes it. I think I'm going to shoot the link to him when it's done. I'm pretty sure he's going to say something like, yo, bro, fucking... It's either going to go two ways. He's either not going to like it or he's going to like it, which either way I'm, I'm I'm cool with. You know, I'm not tripping on it. I just want to make good music and put it out there. I don't really want to make... Some of the heavier stuff, you know, that I've been making the real... Like, like this is a complete opposite of Sonia. Sonia was real thought-provoking street, like, lyrical miracle shit. This is not really that. This The Love Superior is more... For the women, you know, I don't really make songs for women. The first song I ever made was a was for a woman, but I kind of veered off of that ever since we did for the ladies, me and Mufasa. I kind of got away from that. I did still have songs for women, but it wasn't like I had a full album in the tuck ready to go for anything besides street shit. And I'm still talking that that shit on my uh, on this album, but a love superior is more like everything that I don't cover. So how I feel about women, this and that. A little bit I've already talked about on the podcast, but with the album, it's just kind of like its own different little thing. So 
it's not done too. I have I had a, I have a thing where like I'm gonna I'm doing a track every day and then boom it's gonna be just seven tracks. Uh, I have five already. Pretty much, I just need two more, and I'm just figuring it out. Not not thinking too deeply, but with one two man, one two has just great beats. A lot of them are slow though. A lot of them are like 83 BPMs or whatever, uh, 81 BPMs. He's putting it at a uh, few beats like the standout ones in my opinion, are, are more fast-paced. But one who has like this really dope stilo where he just finds and chops up really dope samples and puts his drums behind it. And I think that's really dope because with the lo-fi producers, I felt like a lot of them took cues from Swum. He's not the only one, but just to give an example, like Swum, as soon as he came out, I heard a ton of Swum beats. You know, and this is not produced by Swam or Knowledge or whoever uh, beside you, Jar Jar. Uh, uh, is it Jar Jar Jr.? Jar Jar. Uh, he's hard too, but there's a Shamana. He's another one. Uh, he or her. But with one two man, you know when it's a one two track, it's just booming, booming bass. The the the. Uh, what is it? The kick is really uh, hard, but the snare, it could be, you know, the lo-fi snares could either be like a tick, like a tick or some sort of awkward ass snare that's like not even a snare. It could be just like, I don't know, a, a fucking, what is it? A drumstick hitting a, a cowbell or something like that. Really, lo-fi is a really interesting uh, instrumental genre that... I've been into since I was a freshman in, in college. Even before that, like, um, like, um, when did I actually got into lo fi around my senior year in high school? To tell you the truth, the f I don't even think. All right, so for my first mixtape, even before that, like, like, yeah, like the summer of junior year before going into in my senior year, I was working on my first mixtape. And without even knowing, I stumbled upon this, it's a crazy, like, worldwide independent label called Dusted Wax Kingdom. I think I had just typed in, you know, the uh, underground beats or something on Google because I needed beats and I didn't, it just felt weird getting, like, Apollo Brown beats, Mad Lib beats. I just kind of wanted to find other producers that weren't really known. I mean, I, I didn't really think about it like that, but I just wanted beats that it just, okay, well, everyone's rhymed over shook ones. Everyone's rhymed over, uh, what's that mob, the other mob deep song with, uh, hi, damn, yo, here we go again, right? That's the, uh, uh, is it quiet storm? Whatever. Everyone's rhymed over fucking mob deep beats, biggie beats, you know, the 10 crack commandments, who shot you. It just, you know, I wanted to create my own lane. So with Dusty Wax Kingdom, there was a bunch of lo-fi producers. And to me, they were just underground beats. But when you listen to them, they're lo-fi as fuck. Producers, shout out Romo, Subject Jazz, uh, Skipless. Who else? Um, trying to think off the top. Of my head. There's just a whole bunch of producers, bro. Uh, um, Dranal, uh, he produced for Reggie Snow, or, or that one song, Meddling Loops, which I, I ended up rhyming over again. Uh, Reggie's, uh, uh, the Meddling Loops beat, it's called Persian Rugs. I put it out. But one, two, so this is like before, I wouldn't say it was before, but it was like right around the time, like lo fi really started bubbling. Like to me, the, pri the pioneers of, uh, Lo-fi, in my opinion, are like Beside You, Swam, Wansu, um, you know, Shema. There's dudes, there's like lesser names out there. Uh, not lesser names, but just producers that were around but didn't really, in my opinion, have a strong kind of a, a foundation that Lo-fi was was, is what what it is now. So like Shamana, uh, Jar Jar, whatever. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. I don't even know why I started to go down that road. But with one, two, let me put um, let me put the charger on my camera real quick. Cause you know we're doing everything last minute. So 
One, two, man, it's just with him. I feel like he has his own stilo, like Swam. And I don't mean uh, to be like the fucking the disciple of these producers, but they're just really great producers, you know. And and one two's never had a full album with a rapper. He's he's done the the I'll still keep you underneath the moonlight, you know, uh, Reggie Snow, the I'll still keep you, and that's it. I've never heard, um, I've never heard a fucking one two on any anything else. So I kind of I know lo-fi producers because I've heard this from a producer before that they don't like rappers rapping over their beats. They just want to make beats, which is cool. But in my opinion, it's kind of like if you want to get far, you got to work with everybody: producers, photographers, dancers, graffiti artists, rappers, fucking A and R's. You got to work with everybody, and I understand. People don't think of it in that way. They just want to make music, and I respect that. But it's just, in my opinion, if you really want to take your career to the next level, you got to, if you make beats, you need someone to spit on, to spit on them. You need a rapper. If you're a rapper, you need a producer. You, how the fuck are you going to get beats, right? Unless you're like me, I'm like Dr. Dre, but I could write my own shit. No, this is Dr. Dre, but I could produce, write my own music, mix, master, all that shit, and... I, I I was gonna front and call myself a Renaissance man, but a rent what the definition of a Renaissance man is is the master of all arts. I don't think I mastered everything. I think I'm just good enough to hold my own, and fuck it. That's just you know I'm the master of self before anything. You know the master of my own fucking mente, right? So with the love superior. I really think uh, the the ladies are going to love it. I I definitely think it's going to be a more introspective part of my discography. Maybe not all the way, but definitely I'm I'm giving it up for the ladies. And a lot of this was inspired by newer stuff versus a lot of my older material with with, with women, like for the uh, ladies and stuff, was more so like stories and past things that, that had happened versus... A love superior is more recent shit that I've been going through. So it's more real in my opinion. Um and just to just to take a break from music, I don't know if you noticed, but I've been growing my hair out because the homie uh Carlos he he upped his price to fifty dollars. So I think the last time I got my haircut was the six. It's been a month. This is how my hair looks in a month. I look like a fucking shaggy dog. I look like shaggy. You know what I mean? I fucking look wild right here, bro. My shit is looking like my head, bro. Pause, but I'm literally like fucking so glad I'm gonna get my haircut. I think next Monday. I think it is next Monday or Tuesday, something like that. And then need get a, need to get a fresh cut so I can do a new podcast episode. Going back to the music though, uh, the homie, we were talking and shit, and he was and. Out of the blue, I just asked him, I don't know why rappers have super crazy egos. I don't know what it is. I don't give a fuck what it is. It's just rappers have really big egos over little fucking shit. So me and the homie were talking about, he's a rapper. And I asked him, how many albums do you have? And I don't even know if he said one. But I told him, bro, I have like 50 albums. I could count on my hand how many singles I do. And he's not the only one. There's literally rappers who only do singles, and I think that's fucking stupid. And to me, it's just like, you're putting music last. Not to offend anybody, it's just, when you're working on music, you want to put out a nice quality body of work. You could put out singles, but you could be like, oh, okay, this didn't make it on the album, or we're getting ready for the album, this is just a freebie, and you just do it like that because that's what a single is. It's just a fucking throwaway. Unless it's a, a lead single off of a song, unless it's a single um, off a song, unless it's a single off of an album, like, yo, fuck with this, the, the album's coming soon, so we're gonna drop uh something, you know, bam, to hold you down for the album to get you anticipating all like that, the old industry chick chicks, the old industry tricks but rappers ain't even doing that they just dropping off singles and shit and you could tell which uh rappers are single rappers because every song sounds like a single you know that it has the same poppy ass rap shit 
And in my opinion, it, it, it makes the listening experience suffer that much more because it's like, if as a listener, I'm thinking this don't sound like an album, this just sound like a whole bunch of singles put together, like Drake albums or stuff like that. It's just, I don't like that. I want, I like when, when, you know, you talk about, oh, uh, uh, Biggie, what's your favorite song? And it's a Biggie song that's like not even fucking nobody even really knows that song. Like, I think it's called, um, is it, is it dangerous MCs or something like that? But it's like diamonds on my neck, chrome drop top, chilling in the scene, smoking pounds of green. Ooh, we, you see, I think it is dangerous MCs or, or anything like, uh, like the verses shit he has with Eminem. But I really like that when, or even like Makami, you know, you could say, oh, like my favorite fucking Mox song is what's like his most popular shit. Like let's, and Mox not even like big like that. He's super underground, but you know, Regina. Okay. What else does he have? Mucho Asal or, or, you know, uh, what's everyone knows the uh, floor seats, right? So everyone's favorite song is floor seats by Makami. Don't ask me why. Uh, it's a good song, but for me, bruh, Marie or Maui, however you want to say it, fire that old fumo. That shit is stupid. Uh, what is it? No blood, no sweat. Um, whatever song he has on us, uh, is it not self love? Self love is on that album. That album, I think it's called Balance Chose Hot Candles, but it's like then, 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 that shit that whole album was fire i think that one was more slept on than a lot of other shit i kind of did it really i wasn't really fucking with Mox's new album the tiger style just not my cup of chocolate you know but my kami that's the album rapper Mock probably has no singles compared to albums like there's um there's this single he has he has a few singles, but one single I, I remember he's holding. You can't even find it anymore. I have it, though. I'm probably going to post it on my YouTube. But it's him holding like a bottle. It's like either wine or rum. or It looks like a 40 ounce. But I think it's like hashtag ZBS. So that was either like promoting the new album he was going to put out or it was just a single for it. But, you know, he has I grade, uh, the January EP... There's a whole bunch of Makami uh, EPs and shit that came before, you know, uh, HBO, like FYI. There's, he has that one, uh, I think it's called Wedding Bell, Wedding Bells, that's hard, Gorman Dies. But Gorman Dies was off of Dumpmeister. So, that's what I'm trying to say, bro. Single, single rappers don't, are, to me, in my opinion, are like one-hit wonders. Like, what are you doing, you know? What are you trying to accomplish? Because if you're just trying to do singles, play the industry shit, just make a whole bunch of money. Because that's what it means. If you're a single rapper, you're just chasing the sound of now or or just trying to get the quick uh, roll of the dice and get your fetty out like that. But in my opinion, it's just more so being an artist means you got to put out a good body of work. So just make a fucking album, you know, you can at least one, you know, at least to just be like, you know what? If you're not feeling the singles, I got this album. Boom. Who's a single rapper that there's like no single rappers that I like that I say, oh, but this album's hard. I think Drake only has, you know, if you're reading this is too late. That's probably my favorite. Uh, it's not even a, he called it a mixtape. That was when they were still calling them mixtapes. But I got that. Uh, I, I like that one, even though it, to me he's a single rapper. Twenty One Savage, in my opinion, now he's like a singles rapper. Savage Mode, the whole shit wasn't hard, but out of his whole everything, Savage Mode is dope. It's just, it's just a different thing. And the homie, he's talking about, you know, he tried to flip it on me, like, oh, like, are you, are you big mad or something? I'm like mad about what? Why would I be mad about, bro, if, if you drive your car one-handed, you know what I mean? 
And you and you saying, oh, are you mad? Cause someone's driving two hands. Hey yo, that's wild pause. But someone's driving two hands. <laughs> hey, that, that was wild pause, my bad. But if you're driving one-handed, right? And someone's driving two-handed, that look wild too. What's like what is there to be mad about, bro? There's just like it's just the way that you drive. There's, there's there's no big fucking whoop about nothing. We don't gotta be mad about shit. It's just like, okay, well, if you wanna drop one song every fucking three months or whatever it is, then do that, bro. I just it didn't it didn't matter to me. That's that's my what you do got no effect on my creative musical expression, bro. I've been had over forty albums before I met you. Who's mad about what, bro? Like it's just you know it just gets to the point where it's like you gotta stay away from some people sometimes because people think they take shit all they take they take it up the street over the hills and down the road and you just like you didn't gotta go that far with it bro it's not that serious it's not that serious bro I'm really just over here doing my own shit and just because I ask a question like yo welcome you don't have an album like I'm not mad for like where where was I mad in any of that asking questions. I don't know, people, some people are fucking weird in my opinion, but singles versus album rappers. I don't like rappers who make singles. I just don't. Biggie never made singles. And and, and I'm not saying they never made singles. I'm saying they just made songs without albums. Every single rapper, I would hope, that has singles has them on an album. Everyone does it. Biggie did it. Pac did it, you know, Hail Mary, come with me, you know, who are uh, Wu-Tang Clan, eh? uh, uh, protect your neck, a, sh- a smoke on a mic like smoking Joe Frank, you- come on, bro, knock it the fuck off with all this, you know, I'm only making singles right now, no, you're not making singles right now, you're just not making music like that, say that, okay, don't give me no shit about, oh, I'm only making singles right now, so you can fucking uh, seem like this mysterious, mystique-ass bullshit aesthetic. You not, bro. You just not taking your music serious. And if that's the case, say that then, bro. Don't be fucking over here. Oh, yeah, right now, I'm not in an album mode. I'm just fucking living life, and I'm just chilling and fucking, fucking floating with the fishes, dog. Like, what the fuck is that? Seriously, just what kind of shit is that, bro? Me, dog, I I never, ever, ever took a break from music. Never. Even if when I wanted to, I'd be at work or some shit, listening to a beat, I think of rhymes right away. Now, I don't mean I'm fucking walking around like Sean P said, you know, rapidly rap, 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 rap. Like, yeah, I'm not like that either, but you find that balance, you find that fine line. Okay, I'm at work, it's fucking boring as fuck, let's put a beat on and let's see what I can come up with. Four bars, boom, 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 write it on the phone, go home. There's literally been days I come home from work, I'll write a whole fucking song. I did that like two or three times. I'll be at work and write a song. You know? But don't give me this shit about, oh, you know, I'm only making a fucking song every fucking time the gopher looks at his ass and needs to wipe it or whatever the fuck. Groundhog's Day. But whatever it is, bruh, just... I don't know. To each his own, but at the same time, don't we know... I know what it is. You're just not trying hard enough, bruh. Just say that. Just I, right now, I don't music ain't my priority. I got fam, I got my family to feed. I got kids. I got a girl that's up my ass about shit. Hey, then if that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. But sabes que me, no me importa. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit, bro. Me vale. I'm over here doing what my heart truly desires, and that's music. That's always been day one. And literally, I, I got bit by the bug again with the fucking paintings. I'm over here painting my own shit. That has a that adds a whole nother layer to my whole artistry, and I love that shit. The podcast, I love this shit. Painting, fucking... Uh, I do the things I do because I love it, not because I want to seem like I'm this fucking chingon ass fucking leva or whatever, you know, it's just, I'm doing what I love to do and I just feel like we're going to settle it right here, fuck singles, rappers, no offense to nobody, it's just, 
Y'all want to be one hit wonders in sync. Nobody was like, yo, damn, that fucking in sync album was hard. They're talking about whatever famous fucking in sync song was out there or Justin Timberlake. They talk about cry me a river or whatever that song with for a boom, 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 boom. That whatever that stupid song was. I like that shit when I was a kid too. Or I like suit and tie with him and Jay Z. The fucking uh, let me a good thing. That was a hard song. You know what I mean? Uh, once Jay Z's part comes up, you gotta you gotta fast forward that shit and go back to what you know what I mean. Jay Z makes the whole shit. The hook, Jay, the hook in Jay Z's verse, fire. Jay Z smokes a lot of the shit he was doing. The only um. Everyone likes that one song. Is it, is it Excuse Me, Miss? With Pharrell and Jay-Z. Not really a fan of that, but Beautiful is like... Is my shit right there. Oh, oh, oh. And I just want you to know that you are really special. Oh, why, oh, why. Right? That's that song, right? What's the other song he has with Snoop Dogg? Not Drop It Like It's Hot. Whatever. I can't think of it, but... That's what I'm trying to say, bro. It's like my fucking glasses are dirty as a fuck. But all I'm saying is, bro, is be be more um, conscious of the fact that you're artists. You're not some fucking weirdo. Some of these weirdos are. They choose to be artists. Maybe I'll just leave my glasses off. But whatever. To each his own. I don't give a fuck at this point. I didn't yapped about it for too long. I, I spent the whole shit. Spent the whole shit. On this thing already, uh, there's literally I have like ten topics to go over. Only I got thirty two. Look at look at you don't think I got notes? Look at this. I got a whole bunch of shit. And look, if anyone noticed this shit is backwards, oh well, who gives a fuck? You know how long it's gonna take for me to flip the camera again? And I don't got. Wait, hold on. Can I really? Okay, I'm talking about post production shit in a fucking pot. No one wants to hear about big services editing. Okay. Um, people who follow to have followers. Okay. So just real quick, I'm not going to go on a rant about this, but there's people out there, especially when you network with other rappers and shit, they follow like 2000 people. Why the fuck you following 2000 people? There's people that follow me that I don't follow back. Not because we're not homies, not because I don't like them, but because it's like, I don't want to be distracted by other people's lives. I follow 100 people. I want to follow, I want to unfollow like half of them already because I feel like the more I'm in tune with their lives, I'm out of tune with my life and I got to get on my shit so I could take care of myself, you know? I really don't give a fuck about nobody else's, you know, like Tay Rock said, you know, I'm not in no financial position to feed nobody but my family. That was probably the hardest, realest battle rap bar of all time. And it's true. You can't be. Over here, just subscribing to other people's lives and just being distracted and shit. So I don't like people who follow other people just to have followers. Like, oh, if I follow two thousand people, I'll fucking have. I won't have two thousand followers, but I'll have fifteen hundred followers. And fuck it, that's good enough for me. It's just like I literally monitor because there's the people. They just follow you just so you can follow them, and then they unfollow you. It's like fuck you, fuck your follow, and. Fucking, I'm going to unfollow you, pussy, because that was always the trick back in the day. You follow people, they follow you, you unfollow them. Now you only follow three people, and now you have a thousand followers because all these other idiots think you're still following them. But I was never I was never digging that. And then the people who fucking, they follow you, they follow 2,000 other people. So then their, your, your one post is buried under a thousand fucking stories, a thousand fucking posts. How the fuck are they going to even uh, 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 pay attention to you? So it's like, they're not even supporting you. They don't give a fuck about you. And I just think that's lame. So fuck these people who just follow you just to have followers. Oh, I'm somebody because I have 2,000 followers. Yeah, dick, but you follow 3,000 more motherfuckers. So really, it's just like, you're an idiot because you think having followers is some sort of uh, uh, valuable uh, equity in this bullshit-ass social media game. Fuck social media. Fuck social media. 
I, I only have like 212 friends on Instagram. Twitter, I got like 300 or something. Half of them motherfuckers are robots or even more. Or just people who don't even have Twitter anymore. And it's like, I literally uh, know more people that know me uh, in, in real life combined. You know what I mean? People that could be like, oh, there's... Serbs, oh, that, what's up, bro? They don't even follow me on Instagram. They don't even have my fucking phone number. It's just like, you know, it's just real shit. I said I wasn't going to go on a rant and draw it out, but I did. But it doesn't matter. I'm thirsty. Um, Am I even going to talk about what I did over the weekend? Or should I just... Fuck it. However long this thing is, we're going to just cover everything. Because... I need to get rid of these topics. I've had these topics for like two weeks now. Hip hop media outlets are whack. They've been whack. I don't know when they haven't been whack. You know, the source started the whole East versus West bullshit with Biggie and Tupac. But I was just looking at some stupid fucking post that had nothing to do with nothing. It it, it was one of those fake fucking hip hop media outlets that like they're basically copies of the Shade Room or whatever it is, and it's just like I don't know it was some some irrelevant post about something about cats or some bullshit, and I literally blocked them. I'm like, I don't ever want to see this shit again because Twitter does that thing where. Now, they used to have just your timeline of people of just that you follow. Now, it's like you, you're you looking at other people's likes and other other accounts that you don't even follow. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa I, didn't, I didn't ask to subscribe to look at none of this bullshit. Why the fuck am I looking at this shit? But a lot of like Hip Hop DX, a lot of these hip hop media outlets are whack, bro. They literally cover gossip, bullshit. They're not even looking out for up and coming talent, rappers, whatever. They're not even they're not even being on no positive shit. It's either like gossip or negativity or who got shot or shanked or snitches or just bullshit. And I don't want to fuck with it. I don't fuck with none of these hip hop media outlets. They're all whack. They can all suck dick. They're all like DJ fucking lame academics where they just go over dumb shit that no one can give fucking nine fucks about. And here I am ranting about this shit again. Hip hop media is just whack. So I'm going to just calm down and just advocate real journalism and you know journalism now be like you know all the 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 writers that be fucking dick writing whichever rappers which is better than the color of rihanna's toes shout out to rihanna's toes but you know the, the how many eggs the turtles didn't lay this year and they're gonna go extinct next month like, i don't give a fuck about that shout out to the turtles PETA, and fucking oceans out there but at what point does, 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 do people just stop and say, you know what, I, I could just really go for a walk right now. Literally, I went for a walk and I did like three and a half miles, starting to go back, you know, walk every day and shit. It's really good. Got the blood flowing. I'm, I'm waking up earlier. Presley, he fucking takes like 10 naps every day. He wakes up. He, he goes to sleep. We wakes up. He goes to sleep again. He wakes up, eats, takes his shit, goes to sleep again. It wakes up, goes outside, comes back inside, he tans in the sun, goes to sleep again. And I literally had to tell my dog, like, bro, you, you didn't slept probably 18 hours, bro. It's 24 hours and you sleep in 18 hours, guy? Come on now. And 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 one of the reasons why I bring this up about like being healthy and shit is it's hard to maintain weight loss, bro. I gained like 10 pounds uh not too long ago, and then I lost so, so like I gained like 10 pounds and then I lost it again. Really? I was 336 pounds. If nobody knows, if no one, no one paid attention. I know in like some of the past podcasts, it looked like I'm, I'm like getting fat again. I'm not. It's just my weight is just, I don't know. I don't know how it looks like on camera or whatever the fuck, but basically I was 336 pounds when I was getting that EDD money, I was spending it on nothing but weed and chicken wings and wing stop every day. And it was so unhealthy for me, bro. So I just, I don't know. I, I did mushrooms and then that kind of like, I don't know what kind of changed my life and shit. 
So I started walking every day. Two two apps helped me lose weight. Pokemon Go, and I play Pokemon Go every day when I go on my walks, and Weight Watchers. So those two, it made me drop weight like that. I think I want to say I dropped uh, 50, almost 60 pounds within the first six months. So I started in August, September, October, November, December. So five months, I, I lost like 10 pounds every one of those months. But from going from 280 to 265, right? What is that? Like 15 pounds, right? 15 pounds. It took a lot longer. I want to say it took like maybe a year after that. And for me to go from 265 to 255, which I'm around now, like I weighed myself today and I and I gained like another pound, another like pound or two over the week. It's really hard. Like, especially if you're not working out, you're going to get fat again. But um, I'm 257 right now. Like right now, right now, I'm 257. I'm not like, oh, okay, I'm 257, but really I'm 260. No, I'm 257. It's just hard to maintain uh, weight loss, but from to going from 265 to 255 was another year. And that's not because I'm really trying. It's just I kind of chilled on it. Now, if I was over here hitting the bags and shit again and doing, you know, jump ropes and fucking, you know, that shit, <laughs> you do that shit. Yeah, I would I would be losing more weight, but the thing is I'm not fake. I want to I want to live a disciplined sustainable lifestyle and do it step by step. I don't want to do that like, shout out my cousin. My cousin lost a shitload of weight, but he let himself go and he gained like I want to say he gained like all the weight back and then some, but not to shit on him. It's just like I want to discipline myself. And he's over here like, ah, bro, we can't even go nowhere because you count your points and all this shit. It's like, yeah, what the fuck? I ain't trying to be fat. Like, I was, like, there's, like, a performance I have in Riverside. Super fucking fat. I mean, I'm, like, the fucking Chicano Biggie Smalls. I'm fat as a fuck. So whenever people try to give me, like, fat jokes or, like, fat shaming, it's like, man, fuck you and your mother sucks five fucking Dominican Cox motherfucker because uh literally I'm 80 pounds down and you you really can uh go fuck yourself because I'm I did what what your mama wish she could bitch didn't mean to go off like that but it's hard to maintain weight loss man and for people to give you shit it's kind of like you're lame I remember at work, there was some one dude, and I don't even see him anymore, so I I hope he quit. I hope they fired him, or maybe I hope, maybe not that I hope, but whatever. Um, this dude, for like our, our meeting or whatever, they were going to get food, so they're like, what do you want? And this fool's like, taco, man, taco Tuesday. And to anybody who just eats tacos on taco Tuesday, you're fucking lame, bro. Like, you... I'm a fucking, I'm Chicano, bro. I eat tacos whenever I feel like it. It could be fucking Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Jesus' birthday, my mama's birthday. I'm going to have tacos whenever the fuck I want because that's how the fuck I get down. And I had tacos like not so long ago. I still got out pastor in the fucking fridge. I'm probably just going to go eat a pastor taco right now or make a quesadilla or something. But Taco Tuesday, that shit it always irked the fuck out of Let's get some pisto taco Tuesday, dog. Fucking fuck out of here with that stupid shit. But this one dude, he told me, uh, well, he said, you know, yeah, we'll get some tacos, dog, taco Tuesday. And I'm like, I'm like, nah, man, let's get some pizza or something, bro. I have tacos every day. He's like, yeah, I know. I could tell. And I forgot what I told him. I was like. I, I told him some some shit like that, some 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 smart back to him, like a rebuttal. But then he said some shit like, "Oh, that's okay, sweetheart," or something like that. And I look at him, and I was like, "Oh, maricon, what the?" I was like, "Get this maricon away from me!" <laughs> like, what the fuck, dudes who like be like joke, like gay jokes, never been cool. Like the dudes who blow kisses at each other and call each other, uh, uh, 
like Bea and shit like that or, or whatever the gay jokes are. I'm like, y'all are really like two tequilas away from sucking each other's dick. Get get me away from you, maricons. And I don't have no problem with problems with gay people. It's just I don't like being around dudes who play like that because it's like if you in the closet, just say it, bro. Just say, oh, you know, this is a joke, but really, like, you know, I've been thinking about some things. Like, nah, man, cut that shit out, bro. Just, I don't know. Y'all know how I feel about people who don't live in their truths, maniacs and all that shit. We'll get into that later, but I don't know how we start. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, so he was over here trying to make fun of my weight, but it's like, bitch, I lost 80 pounds, you know? And I don't got to explain to you, like, oh, man. I'm not about to get mad and be like, you know what? I lost 80 pounds. I'm not going to take my any shit from you. Like, no, it's it's like, man, like, suck two dicks, bitch. Like, yeah, you've been skinny your whole life. But you 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 could have never, you could have never have lost 80 pounds if you big as fuck. But the statistics is mad against you, you know? If you big as a bitch, if you have, like, the obesity genes, because I was looking this, looking this up and shit, it is so hard for you to lose weight. Yeah, when you skinny as a fuck, yeah, you could drop five pounds like nothing because you're so used to it. So when you just cut down from that, it's not really a big a deal. But when you're used to an excessively, uh, what is it, indulgent lifestyle, it's so hard to cut down. Trust me, bro. Weight Watchers in the beginning was like fucking trying to chop down a brick wall with a brick wall with a machete or something like that. It was like, how the fuck am I going to do this? And what's crazy is when I first got into Weight Watchers, I just wanted to lose 20 pounds. I said, if I could get dropped down from the, the 300s, go back to 295, I was 295 pounds when I was a sophomore in high school, bro. That's all I wanted. To be as fat as I was when I was a sophomore in high school. I'm 257 pounds today, bitch. I don't even remember the last time I was 257. I know I was like, I want to say I was 260 in as a freshman in high school. I'm skinnier. I'm probably as skinny as I was when I was in junior high. Then uh, and and I'm fucking. It's been. Over 10 years, it's been like 15, it's been, a, it's been a long fucking time since I was in middle school, but that's, I'm literally the same weight as I was when I was like, uh, uh, fucking eight or ninth grader. How fucking crazy is that? I spent a majority of my life being fat. I'm still fat now. I'm nowhere where I want to be, but I'm nowhere near where I was. And I'm proud of that. And I'm proud of anybody else who can get the fuck up and get motivated because it's hard. Don't let none of these assholes tell you, oh, yeah, just eat another pizza. Fuck it. Just take these marshmallows and shove them in your fucking face. Don't let these people tell you, oh, you're fat. Be like, fuck you. Your mama's pussy's fat, bitch. You know what I mean? Like, you got to snap back on them. You, you think I'm fat? Bitch, watch me do a fucking... Uh, uh, do a couple push-ups. That kind of seemed crazy right there. A little wacky. My bad. But it's just like, you know, you got to... You got to, you know, you're going to fucking, you know, kick it in gear and be like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to do something by my way. Or you're just going to be like, fuck it. Just shove fucking high holes and snowballs in my face and fuck it. Because that's how I was until I said, you know what, enough's enough. We're going to do something about this shit right here. And that's what the fuck I did. <laughs> uh, Social media is too distracting. Yeah, I already covered that. So Social media is too distracting, bro. It's just like, get the fuck off the phone. Oh, why I came up with this? The homie, he keeps sending me reels of bullshit. This dude, someone getting shot, someone getting robbed, pe fat people singing about tacos. It's like, I get it, this shit is funny, but this is too distracting. And if you sending me two reels, you probably saw 20 and thought, oh, well, what can I send the homie because this shit will be an interactive fucking experience. I don't give a fuck, man. Send me some positive shit. You know what I'm saying. Somebody lost a whole bunch of weight. Somebody climbed Mount Everest. Fucking uh, somebody built a fucking hovercraft. Like, how come we don't get shit like that in China? To, they have TikToks of people being engineers. This, that, positive shit. The TikTok over here is fucking little girls dancing and shit. Bitches with their titties out. I like seeing that shit in the ass. Salute to them. But everything else is bullshit. Really, what I like watching on TikTok... Is like funny shit, comedians or dogs. Because I love dogs. And I love when the huskies sing and they put the auto tune in their voice. And 
it's just fucking hilarious. To me, it's hilarious. The whole TikTok shit. But that's where I draw the line. Because social media is too distracting. We got Twitter, which is all bullshit. People, they want to fucking tweet some bullshit that they think are going to get likes and views. You got Instagram, which is, which is the same shit. And TikTok, which is all nonsense. People just singing and remixing songs that are popular, that were popular 20, 30, 10, 5 years ago. Social media is too distracting, so just get 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 it the fuck off. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. You know, I'm on a roll. Today's a today's a good episode. I know I I know when I made a good one, this is a good one right here. I might flip it too, so you can actually see you know the serves La America Superior Palacio Ochenta Uno. You know, few things left. So we got Far Cry Primal is the shit. I don't know if you've ever played Far Cry. I played three, four, five, six was dumpster juice. But Primal smokes everything. You're basically like a caveman with a spear, bow and arrow, club. And you literally taming fucking saber tooth tigers, elephants, bears, dogs, wolves. And and uh, uh, you're basically, you go to this land... And you're just reuniting your people into a tribe. And like, you know, it's really dope. Like you have a shaman and people and like other like important people in your village that help you and stuff. It's a really great game. So far, I'll give it a 9.3 out of 10 on the Serbometer. But it's fire. I just love it so far. The whole like you pray to the spirits the animals, you're in the, the prehistoric times. Like, I think it's 10,000 BC. It's in the Stone Age. Really dope. I, I, I really love the game. Uh, probably the best Ubisoft game, for sure. Better than Assassin's Creed. It's just... There's no other game like it where you're a fucking caveman and shit. They have their own r- language in the game that they fucking just made up. If that just doesn't tell you the amount of, of research they had to do, like linguistics and shit like that, to get the game going, then I don't know I don't know what a good game is, you know? Far Cry Primal is awesome. Go get that shit. I think it's only like $10. I got it on the PlayStation Premium shit. Literally, I'm just going to buy it and I'm just going to... Right now, I got the the premium just so I could test out all like the PlayStation games, and then I'm just gonna buy the ones I actually like. Um. So while I've been sober, you know, people literally count the days, the seconds, down to the milliseconds, and all that shit. Being sober is, isn't really that hard for me, man. Um. I don't really think about it. I don't. Yeah, there is times where I'm like, why don't I just crack open a beer? And I'm like, but where? why would I do that? Why would I spend my money doing that? I'd rather buy a, a spray can. I'd rather buy canvases. You know, there's other things my money could go to that I personally would, would do a lot more than getting high, getting this, getting that. Uh, being sober, you know, I do kind of struggle with anxiety and not even really paranoia, but just more so anxiety and even when I do the podcast, like even now, I still get like a little anxious and stuff like that. But it's a real thing I go I go through and I want to be real with my listeners. And I just feel like being sober this long. I've been sober for like a year and three months now. It's just been good for me, you know, and it's not hard at all. So when I see things like Wiz Khalifa saying, oh, when you've only been sober a year, it's not shit. Why don't you ask people who've been sober 10 years, then come talk to me? It's like, Wiz, when's the last time you've been sober, bro? It's like, what? Like, I love Wiz Khalifa, but bro, you've been smoking weed in your sleep for about since whatever the, the papers and planes came out whenever or before that. It's like, I love Wiz Khalifa, bro, but... You get sober for a whole month, and then you come talk to everybody else who's been sober longer than that, and then we can have a conversation about sobriety, because if you're talking about, yeah, you know what I'm saying, you being sober for about a year, you know what I mean, didn't really do nothing, it's like, you know, shut, 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 shut the fuck up, please, just... You don't, you don't really know what you're talking about. I kind of get what you're saying, but you really don't know what you're talking about. You be sober for a year, Wiz, and then let's revisit this conversation. Finally, we're 50 minutes in and we get to what I did over the weekend. So, 
I had uh I had my tia Trini and my grandma over the week. We did a podcast. You probably already seen it. Um, my tia made some. I think it's called makulba, makulba, right? Makulba. It's this, and it's her own way she did it too. So it's like Arabic rice with chicken, fire, bro. She got like a bunch of like my my tia is Muslim, so I mean I talked about that. So she has a bunch of like Arabic. Um, this is she knows, and she was showing me and shit. That makulba was fire, bro. I, I encourage everybody to go out there and try some. Um, Saturday, I think I just kicked it. I think I wrote a song Saturday. I wrote a song Friday, right? For a love superior, I wrote a song Friday. Saturday, I started writing the song yesterday. I finished it. But Saturday, I think I just kicked it. I don't even think I talked to Mufasa. Maybe. No, no. I think I talked to him for like two minutes. You know, said, what's up? Where you at? He told me he was in South Central. I said, how's your grandma doing? He said, she's doing good. All right, cool. You know, we're going to hit you up. Bam. Boom. Just click. You know, love my cousin. You know, I could just, we could talk for three hours. We could talk for two minutes. But as long as, you know, I just hit him up, check in with, with cuz. It's like, that means a lot to me. You know what I mean? Just like, just to hear him like. Just to talk to him for a little, not even, you know, just high and by, you know. My tia, she calls my mom and literally my mom's like, oh my God. Because my tia will just talk about her fucking day. The fucking dog ran away. The neighbor's dogs ran away. The neighbor's neighbor's dogs ran away. Then Cynthia, she got her nails done. But then Cynthia doesn't like Aaron and Aaron's boyfriend. And you're like, holy fuck. How the fuck can you not know that you're being annoying right now? Well, my cousin, it's not like that. It's just like, what, what you doing right now? I'm in South Central. What you doing? Kicking at the crib, playing Far Cry, just did a painting. Oh, that's what's up. You you fucking, uh, you like it or what? Oh, I don't know. I'm just trying new shit. Where you at? I'm in South Central. Oh, yeah, that's what's up. Uh, how's your grandma been? She's doing good, bro. All right, I'm fucking, uh, I'm going to hit you up soon. All right, cool. Bam, boom. That's it. How you doing? What's going on? What you doing? Bye. That's awesome. We could just do that, and that's cool, bro. We don't have to talk about bullshit just to talk, you know? Hey, how you doing? Goodbye. Farewell. See you again. Until next time, say la vie, you know? Je ne sais quoi. So, oh, sa- uh, um, yeah, Saturday, I didn't really do shit. Just painted. Um, Sunday, um, it was Noibat Community Day for Pokemon Go. I'm going to reiterate. So Pokemon Go, they do events where they dedicate a whole day to one specific Pokemon. And this Pokemon is called Noibat. It looks like a bat and, uh, it's purple and it's awesome. So I was just at the Ontario Mills. Oh shit. Should I even say Am I going to bleep this out? Okay, we're at 52 minutes. I'm going to bleep it out. Okay, so I was at the mall. And I'm looking at... I'm just going playing or whatever. And then I just look. Because they got jewelry, right? And I was just listening to the No Studio and podcast with Geechee Gotti. And, and he was talking about like fake jewelry in the mall. And I'm like, they got real jewelry. Yeah, the real jewelry is in fucking Jacob the Jewelers or, or uh, what is it, K Jewelers. It's not those little kiosks, bruh. Because I was looking at the chains, you know, they got the, the pendants with the weed leaves, the letters, Buddha, the Guadalupe. And I'm looking at them, right? And I'm like, just looking, just looking. The lady, hello, sir, can I help you? Look, the price tag, all the price tags are like $100. $100 for a gold chain? That don't seem right. I said, excuse me, Um, are these gold chains, are, are they real? She said, no, Um, we have some real, but most aren't. I said, oh, I, 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 I thought so. You know, I didn't think these were real at all. Uh, <laughs> so I'm thinking about getting a new gold chain. You know, I already have my my tiger, but I've had this chain forever, bro. I've had, and look how thin this chain is, dog. See through chain, like Fat Joe says, see through ass chain. But I'm pretty sure this is like a fucking 18 karat or 24 for sure. This this is like not pure, not pure pure gold, but like this is you know 
It's a gold fucking chain. It's not cheap. Because if it was cheap as fuck, it would have been thicker. You know, like a Cuban, you know, like Conway said, yo, Cuban hollow, yo, roly tick. That was hilarious. Um, what was I going to say? Um, thinking about getting a gold chain, but, uh, you know, I got to get my computer repaired. I got bills. I want to get a new gun. I want to get an, a camera, new camera, all this other shit, right? So I don't think I'm really going to get shit for a long time, especially not a gold chain. Like a gold chain, like on everything I need, the computers first. So I got to get my computer repaired. Then a new camera. Then a new gun. The gold chain is last. So the gold chain is de I'm not definitely not going to get a gold chain for a long time, even if I start saving. I mean, I'll probably get it eventually, but I don't think anytime soon. So... And while I was thinking, I was at the mall. I had um, I had seen these people. They bring their dogs. I said, "Why the fuck they bring their dogs out here?" These I seen this couple. They get out the car. The dog jumps out of the car with them. And like, I'm like, so what the fuck? This fool doesn't have a leash. So when he just runs the street, gets hit in the car, you're like, man, we should have left the fucking dog at the house. Like, what are these people thinking? Bringing their dogs? Like, if your dog is in a, a, a service animal, leave that motherfucker at home. You know, you don't see me in Presley holding hands and shit at the mall, giving him kibble and shit like that. He takes a piss on the floor. Then what, sir? Can you pick up your dog's piss? No, I don't really want to. The fuck. I didn't bring my dog to, to, to fucking pick, take, pick his piss up. Like, what do I look like? Some sort of bitch? But, yeah, people who bring dogs to the fucking mall are, are funny as fuck. Before that, though, I went to Costco. The Costco membership, $60. I spent $80 at fucking Costco on a bag of pretzels, two, sta two things of bananas, five wa stacks of waters, and uh, a box of uh, 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 chicken taquitos, eighty dollars for all that shit, bro. You're high. I fucking hate Costco. Yeah, you save money, but yeah, you're gonna burn a hole through your shit because you're like, oh, I'm gonna save money. Let me just buy everything I need to fucking survive the winter, you know, or whatever the fuck. So sixty dollars for the bullshit ass uh, membership. It's eighty dollars, eighty five actually with the chicken bake. I bought the chicken bake is awesome. Fuck with Costco. I like that. They got some bomb ass chicken bakes. But $145 I spent just on Costco. You got to be fucking. I'm like, man, this chicken bake better hit like a dick sucking because I'm literally like pissed as fuck. And it did almost not like a good dick sucking, but like, you know, a good, a good, a good handy, you know, good handy. Um, That was pretty much my weekend. That was pretty much everything I had. Uh, a Love Superior is dropping February 14th. This will probably air the Friday after. So just know I got two more songs. Got two more songs to do, but it doesn't matter because by the time you see this, the album the album's already going to drop. So it's like back to the future. It's like I'm talking to you in the past, but it's the future and it's in the present and, and present day for me. So if I could leave y'all with a message, man. Don't let throw no, don't let nobody throw you off your game. Write your goals down. Do that shit. Don't give a fuck about what nobody uh, tries to do to throw you off. Just do you, man. And make sure you take care of what you got to take care of, man. Don't ever take your eye on the ball. Stay the fuck off of social media. This is the God's Hour. Smash, Max was the turnout of my lifestyle. Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies. Conversating with the gods by my wildflower. To let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower. To let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower. To let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower. To let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Walk through the sands of times like Gara. On the other side. Side of that gat is karma, he wet Prada, the devil like inside your box now, while the angels fly over my headstone.